Dr. Deepak. Now uh, we look forward to an interesting talk of yours on MSIM, uh, SICS in uh, lens-induced glaucoma. On to you. Uh, yeah, I'll be speaking Hi. on uh, uh, the phacolytic glaucoma as such because phacomorphic glaucoma is the it is much more easier because once we deal with the uh, erexis part of it, the procedure is almost simpler. But in the case of a phacolytic glaucoma, we're dealing with a very pathological anterior capsules and let us see how we can manage. I'm Dr. Deepak Megur. In today's case, let's try to find out whether can we save the bag in this eye with extreme zonular weakness. This is an elderly lady who has long-standing hypermature morgagnin cataract with phacolytic glaucoma. The pressures are controlled and now she's come for surgery. The capsule shows multiple areas of calcific spots. There is mild phacodonosis and the hard morgagnin small nucleus is settled down which is surrounded by a pool of uh, liquid cortex. In this case of long-standing hypermature cataract, I expect profound zonular weakness and the challenge is going to be to deal with these weak zonules and whether we'll be successful in saving the bag. So we need to have some sort of an irrigation to ensure that so this is a transconjunctival tunnel which I am doing here. So we're not doing any uh, conjunctile flap. Again, I'll just quickly move on to the uh, rex part the of it. Once the PD in this uh, parallel to the literal to little bit so that I can pass some annuals R. And we can see multiple folds in the anterior capsule suggesting, I think, profound zonular weakness in this eye. And immediately the loose cortex comes out. So time to deal with it, irrigate out the loose cortex so that we have good visualization and then let's plan accordingly. The first thing which I'm going to do is to inject cohesive OED that is sodium hyaluronate into the bag and also in the anterior chamber. The idea of inflating it into the bag is that it will provide some sort of a stability to the bag, keep it formed and maybe provide some traction force for us to ease out the rexus making process. So filling the bag with high molecular weight viscoelastic is probably going to help me. Uh, that's what I'm thinking now. So in eyes with loose zonules, capsurexus forceps is the best tool to manage the rexus. So I've gone in with my capsurexus forceps holding the flap and trying to tear it. And the enormous zonular laxity is seen here. Multiple folds are there. Even the tearing is not easy. Somehow I could manage to tear until I go and hit this roadblock and this is this calcific spot and this is not looking good here. It is threatening to go into the equator if I proceed further. So I'm just wondering what to do. I just leave it at that, come out, refill the bag with OVD. Uh, let me pause here for a moment and uh, let you know what was going in through my head at that point. Now I wanted to stabilize the bag before completing the rexus. I wanted to insert the CTR itself. Or the second option would be to enlarge the rexus from the other end. So these are the two options which my mind was dwelling into. The first option of inserting the CTR into the bag was a good one uh, because it would really help the bag to get back its stability. The ring would act as an artificial zonule. Then I could complete my rexus with greater ease and without causing much more uh, damage to the already compromised zonules. But there was one important issue or difficulty with this situation. During the insertion of CTR, this weak zone could give way and extend up to the periphery because the ring could tug at this weak area and this is has a propensity to extend out and I could lose the rexus. So that was one issue which really uh, made me think otherwise and I chose the second option. The second option was just to make a nick at the other side of the capsule opening and then try to extend it. And this one I'm trying to do it. As I reach this weak area, again, I can't get through this. So using micro forceps to the left hand and a micro scissors to the right hand, I'm going to give a small nick and we have an opening here. The rest of the capsule again needs to be trimmed. A tangential cut is given and with very carefully the enlargement of the rexus is done. So I have some sort of a semblance of a rexus now. Before prolapsing the nucleus out of the bag, I wanted to enlarge the incision. And as I'm trying to enlarge the scleral tunnel incision, I can see that the inferior part of the bag has really come out in the sense the localized zonular dehiscence is very well seen now. The capsular fornix has come anteriorly and folded. 
So I'm using sodium hyaluronate to fill into the bag and it pushes the fornix back again posteriorly. And now I need to fix this bag before removing the nucleus out. Otherwise, it's more likely that I'm going to lose the bag. That was a challenge here. I push in more cohesive OVD just to keep the bag formed and the chamber also formed. And this is the time for me to insert the CTR. It took a couple of attempts for me to pass the CTR under the enteric capsule. Eventually, the ring could be passed into the capsular bag and important for me to ensure that the ring is rotated and situated in the right plane so that the ring supports the weak area. So I could achieve that. So once the ring gets into the bag, it gives tremendous confidence for us to deal with the nucleus or other steps of the surgery. As I'm trying to mobilize the nucleus out of the bag, we can see that the inferior portion of the bag which is trying to come out is looks very stable and it doesn't protrude out and the nucleus comes out very effortlessly. Using a vectus in the dialer, the nucleus is expressed out using the phaco sandwich technique. There was a moment of scare for me as I'm seeing an oval delineated mark in the posterior capsule is wondering whether PC is intact. But thankfully the PC was intact. That ring was in fact an area of a calcific zone in the posterior capsule. In front and behind the lens, I can see a few cortex fibers which are check for any prolapse of vitreous through the loose zonules. Thankfully there is none. We can see that the tram alone has migrated into the burger space suggesting a free access for the fluid from the antechamber to something behind the lens as well. Uh, that's it, the case is done, the ports are hydrated and these are the pictures of the first post-op day, the cornea is fine, very minimal inflammation, this is the incision, patient had a good vision. Let's look back. Uh, that was it ma'am, thank you for the opportunity and uh... very nice video. Uh, wonderful uh, video, very uh, learning video. The basic thing which she told us was that you need to use capsule forceps uh, most importantly when you are with a phacolytic glaucoma. But when generally about lens induced glaucomas, when would you think of doing a limited pass planar vitrectomy along with the other medications, general preparation which you would do in a lens induced glaucoma? Uh, I would want um, Dr. Ravindra. Yeah, I think I should congratulate Deepak for a wonderful uh, teaching video, and that's mind-boggling. Yeah. About uh, lens-induced glaucoma, it, again, there are so many kinds of presentations, and uh, the uh, I wouldn't go and do a pasplanar vitrectomy unless it's really warranted, and uh, I would do exactly uh, what Dr. Deepak said, remove the cataract and uh, you know, remove the inflammatory mass, remove the cause for the glaucoma, remove the cause for inflammation, start treating, I would rather start treating these patients preoperatively a day or two with steroids as well as uh, NSAIDs along with homotropin so that inflammation comes down, pressure comes down, then take him up for cataract surgery. Most of them can be salvaged, most of them. See, the weight of the cataract is very heavy, it may be 20, 25 grams, I do not know, milligrams, whatever it is, but then weight of the lens is too less. If you have not worsened the zonular uh, compromise during surgery, you can put a lens uh, even if it looks caring before surgery, postoperatively they are pretty, pretty stable. On a long-term basis, whether these uh, lenses will remain in position, I mean, that's uh, the chance you'll have to take in these patients. Uh, wonderful uh, video, Dr. Deepak. Actually, uh, I wanted to ask you one question. Now, supposing these are cases with long-standing uh, intraocular pressure rise and the cornea is already hazy, so how would you deal uh, with these corneas? Like, the epithelial edema part of it, the stromal edema part of it? Uh, usually, uh, what we see is once uh, intravenous mannitol is given preoperatively, the pressure has come to a little bit. And once you do a small paracentesis, many times we are forced to operate even when the pressures are high. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is do a very slow decompression. Invariably, once you do a sm slow decompression, the cornea clears up. Many times there will be pseudo hypopion like picture where the fluid has come out into the enter chamber and visibility will be hampered. So just irrigating will clear up the wheel. Rarely do I require to scrape the epithelium. Rarely. That's a very rare effort. Usually I don't, I wouldn't, uh, don't require in many majority of the cases. Once you decompress the eye slowly and take care of the other factors, the visibility is decent enough. Yes. Dr. Sahu, have you left already? Would you want to add something at this point of time? I think he's... No. Can I add? Uh, Madam, yes. Can I add? yes, 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 doctor. Can I just the doubt? See, recently there has been a, a, a morganic cataract 
uh, I was scaffolding. So there, would, there is a lot of space in the bag because it, the nucleus will be very small and uh, hmm. uh, there will be a lot of space in the bag. So I don't have experience. Anybody has experience of uh, putting I will first then so that the bag will be stabilized first, the, then we can take out the... Yes, that, that's... Malika, that's usually for phaco emulsification. Oh, yeah. We do for that phaco part, not for SIS part. No, no. Yeah, the, no, it can be done. Uh, not uh, only for... Phaco, because the nucleus will be very small. So yeah. the manipulation and the uh, uh, would be uh, less. So, see, you put a isoelastic and put a bag in, uh, I will inside. So I will will be fixed there. So bag will not move much. So the very small nucleus it can be taken out in the antechamber and prolapse. Yes, that is my thought. <laughs> Yes, yes, that is. I mean, uh, FACO, we definitely do uh, I O L scaffold with a hypermature cathode. Uh, but I suppose SICS, the surgeons here should tell. Uh, any other questions? Shall we go on to the next topic? Although uh, I'm sure there is a lot uh, to continue on lens-induced glaucomas itself. Um, any other? To the next topic. Uh, yes, Anaga, you want to say? No, ma'am. I had asked the question. I think Dr. Ravindra sir has uh, answered okay. regarding which they would prefer FACO trap or SICS trap in case the need arises. Yes. Because so of has, the larger incision and more conjunctival involvement. So whether they would prefer a FACO trap or uh, that was what I have. Yes. So he has uh, mentioned the SICS trap. So you can't expect Dr. Ravindra to say anything can be superior to SICS. Uh, and he has his own uh, sound.